Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. As you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, this is going to be my May end of month wrap up and stats. First, I want to apologize for not being in front of my bookshelf like I normally am. I feel like crap. This video is already a day late and I just, to film it, if I had to set it up my normal setup there, I would, I honestly don't know how I'd feel. I'm just, because there's stuff stacked in front of it. I, we're just not going to get into the details. This is how you are. You can still see the bookshelf in the background, as well as the mess that is my room. We're not, we're not going to talk about it. But let's just go first into the stats of the month. I will pull up a, like, graphic here, and I will just read out the stats. So in May, I read 26 books, which totaled to 6,611 pages. The average star rating was a 4.08. I read five audiobooks, 17 ebooks, and four physical books. And of those, 15 were adult, one was new adult, and 10 was YA. So, definitely read a lot of adult books. I totally blame um, Smut Den for that, as all of those books I read were adult books, obviously. And then for genres, I read two contemporaries, three erotic, six fantasy, seven graphic novels, and eight romances. So, um, fantasy, graphic novel, and romance were definitely my uh, main ones. Um, so yeah, let's just go straight into the books. I will pull them up, like put a graphic on the screen as I technically only own one of them. And if it looks like I'm looking up here, it's my laptop is behind me with the information. And I'm only going to talk about the books that I read in the second half of the month as I did the mid-month wrap-up, which will be linked in the iCard. I always forget which side. And the description below. But the first book that I will talk about in this video is The Reckoning by Caroline Peckham and Susan Valenti. This I gave four stars. This is the, th the third book in the Zodiac Academy series, or essentially in the first book, the Awakening, we follow Tori and Darcy Vega as they discover that they are the lost heirs of this kind of mirror world named Solaria, and they end up having to go to Solaria and attend the Zodiac Academy to try to basically, if they complete the Zodiac Academy, they get their inheritance, which is a lot of money, and the throne of Solaria. Um, and so they do that, and then there are these people that are bullying them because um, they are also kind of in line for the throne, um, in a way, and this is the third book, so I can't really talk much about it, but I gave it four stars. This is the best one that I've read. There's actually, like, there's character development. The characters are actually starting to not be assholes, and it was actually really enjoyable. It did take me a little bit, little, a little while to read, as it was, like, 560 pages, but I did thoroughly enjoy it, and I will be continuing the series at some point, but I'm going... There, like, I'm reading the work in publication order of everything that's said in this world, but that is a whole separate thing that I'm not going to go into. And then I also, that the next book I read was Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman, um, and this I gave five stars. This is essentially a novella that follows Nick and Charlie, who are characters in the Heartstopper graphic novel series, as well as they also make an appearance in Solitaire, is it? Um, and... It's essentially a little, like, novella. It's, like, a hundred-ish pages. And it follows them as Nick is, like... It's, like, their final year of them being together in school and the school year is just ending. And it's the... They have an argument and it's it's, it's really cute and adorable. I, I love anything that Alice Oseman has written. And I listened to the audiobook of this, which was really good. The next book I read is... War Olympus by Rachel Smith and it is basically like a modern retelling of Hades and Persephone um, and that's basically all I want to describe about it. I gave it four stars. I read it on webtoons. I still need to continue with the story but and I will at some point and I did really enjoy it. The art style at first was like a little like oh this is going to be interesting but I like fell in love with the characters so easy so I I need to continue with it. That's all I'll have to say. The next book is, or the next comic I shall say, slash graphic novel, is Sh Shades of Magic Volume 1, um, The Steel Prince by B.E. Schwab. And this is the, like, 
prequel comic slash gra graphic novel series to the Shades of Magic um, novels. And essentially in these graphic novels we follow, um, I can't remember the character's name, oops, but who is the king in the A Darker Shade of Magic like trilogy. And it's just like bits and pieces of his like early adulthood. Um, I gave this three stars. It was good. It didn't blow me away and didn't really add to the character. But I will still be continuing with it because I loved the like Shades of Magic series and I need to do a reread of them. Um, and this is kind of slowly pushing me to possibly read them in the future. Like reread them in, in the future. The um, next book I read is... The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass, and this I gave five stars. I absolutely loved it. It was a reboot for me. This essentially follows Slana Sardothian as um, she is an assassin, um, and she essentially is sent on these different missions almost, and you just kind of follow her, um, and that's kind of the easiest way to describe it. This is the novella bind up for the Throne of Glass series, so it is 0 0.5, but it can be read. I say any point before book four um, and it's still and then it, it makes sense if you read it after it's kind of like oh well you kind of almost learn everything that happens in this in that um, but I love this I cried so hard I, I love this book I'm so glad to be doing a reread of this series although I'm doing it slower than I wanted to but that is okay the next book I read was Lock and Key Volume 1, Welcome to Lovecraft by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. And this, I gave three stars. This is the first book in the Lock and Key graphic novel series, where essentially we follow um, the Lock family as they move to um, a new town after things happen. And there are things that are kind of not normal about this house that they move into. It, it's been in the family, and there are like these keys that can do these various things um and that is the easiest way to describe it i've watched the first season of the show and i need to continue it and i like i enjoyed it it just wasn't as horror filled as i wanted it to like i wanted it to be so that's why it was only a three star because like it was good but not great the next book I read is The Lion of the Sea by Michelle and Reichman, and this is the sequel to The Maiden Ship, which essentially follow Dane Alloway, who is a, like, his father is a captain of a ship, and when things happen, Dane ends up becoming the captain, and also learns more about the magic in the world that has supposedly been gone for, um, 200 years, and that's the brief premise of this. Um, The Lion of the Sea, it didn't blow me away. I also feel like it was partly my fault as it took me like three weeks to read as I started at the beginning of the May, beginning of May and I didn't finish it until like almost like towards the end of May. Um, and also it's been, I read the first book in July of last year so it's been like 10 months since I've read the first book so some details slipped away but it was still enjoyable and I will be reading the final book which is The Rightful Bearer which just came out a few days ago so I'll be reading that at some point. The next book is Insatiable by Dee Sparks. This is a um, like contemporary romance, reverse harem, where essentially we follow Tate, that Tate who um, her fiance ends up trying to kill her by shooting her, and she then ends up going to the hospital, getting recovery, and then ends up recovering with the help of three of her friends from college who she hasn't spoken with in eight years and dynamics form relationships form i gave it three stars it was good that's it that's all i have to say i wouldn't really recommend it um but it could have been better it could have been worse the next book i read is reminders of him by colleen hoover and this essentially this i gave five stars i absolutely loved it and this essentially we follow kenna who has just got off got out of prison after being in prison for five years for the causing the death of her boyfriend Scotty and then we also follow Ledger who was Scotty's best friend and it is Kenna moving back to the town that she was in so that she can meet her daughter who was born while she was in prison and then 
Kenna meets Ledger and things go from there. I literally sobbed for probably about four chapters straight. I'm just talking like things kept on happening and I just kept on crying. That's literally all I can say. It definitely is almost one that, it's almost a book that makes you question like who is in the right in this situation? Who is in the wrong? What is best for the child? What is best for each of the people? And I will say the ending was a little, it almost felt rushed, but I still enjoyed it. And it's, I think, my second favorite Colleen Hoover book. And the final book I read this month is Flash Fire by TJ Klune. And this is the sequel to The Extraordinaries, where essentially we follow Nick Bell, who is a fan fiction writer um, for The um, Extraordinaries, Pyro Storm, and Shadow Star. And he just kind of wants to know everything about them, who they are, and everything about about them and how do I describe the book from there and it is him finding out who they are and more stuff about them I guess um and I I love flash fire I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook was amazing um I am I need it heat wave which is book three like um yesterday when I finished the book but it doesn't come out until July so I'm kind of like, um, I need that book now, but you're not going to give it to me until then. So I have to, like the ending, like the last line of the book, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Um, it was just really fun, really, like the energy was just really high. The characters were really good. I love, I love, I've loved everything I've read by TJ Klune. So I'm not surprised that this got a five star. So those are the books that I read in May try to do this as quick as possible and I I will say I think I did good um let me know what is one book that you've read in May or your favorite book or if you've read any of these books just leave a bookish comment in the comments below um and I'm really excited to see if I can ever top May with the number of books because May May 2022 is the most books I've ever read in a month I should have said that at the beginning but that is insane so yeah I don't really think I have anything else to say so bye